to another Speak for Yourself debate. Uh, now we're going to find out who has the strongest argument, who can make the most passionate statements, arguing with facts and use of words, but also really trying to persuade our audience and our judge who's sitting in the midst of a particular proposition. And the proposition we're looking at at the moment is, Britain is full, close the borders. Britain is full, close the borders. I think that's going to excite quite a lot of uh, interest and opinion in this audience, uh, quite rightly so. We've got Grace from Coventry, who's going to be speaking for the proposition. And we've got Fervor from Walsall, and she's going to be talking against it. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get underway. Get your thoughts and, and ideas and, and responses and questions ready. But I'm going to start by inviting Grace to come to the podium and tell us why she is for the proposition that Britain is full, close the borders. We need to close Britain's borders. The security has been breached. It is known that it, since the Paris attacks, it's known that terrorists do come through with the refugees. Therefore, it's security on not just Britain, but our own families and our own children's and our own like mums and dads. We don't have enough money for them to keep coming in and we don't have enough space. We already have to build more schools for the British, like, British people and British citizens who live here and we can't afford to build more for non-British citizens. Okay, that's the proposition for. Thank you very much, Grace. I think there's going to be a few people with some comments for you on that one. What do you think? And speaking against the proposition, we've got Fervor. Fervor, come on up and give us your ideas. Is Britain full? It's a hot topic in the media and in many households. You're not uneducated or wrong if you do agree so, but I hope that my opinions will help change your mind. We don't know, the, no one knows every square inch of Britain to know that it's completely full. And the things that immigrants and refugees do bring to our country makes up for it. I think it was the first Jamaican immigrants that came here, was it 90% of them in the first year, contributed to our country. They bought homes, they had jobs. Most immigrants that come here do want to contribute and although some do kind of take the mick out of our system and use it in wrong ways, overall the people who do come here want to contribute and help build a better lives for themselves and their families. Thank you very much. So, over to our audience, to our debaters in the midst. Is Britain full? Should we close the borders? OK, let's have this gentleman here first and um, behind afterwards, and then I'll be looking over this side of the room. I'm sorry, I don't see how you can say Britain is full when we have empty streets, literal streets of empty houses waiting to be demolished or refurbished. And there's a project going on at the moment, I think in Manchester, where these houses are being taken and refurbished for veterans of war. But how can Britain be full if we have these empty streets? OK, thank you. Pass the microphone behind. <coughs> I think the problem is that Britain's already suffering from problems such as poverty and uh, recession as well. So before we help other countries, we should, have, we should be stable enough for them to come to us. Because then when they come to us, I work at Food Bank, well, volunteer at Food Bank. And I know people from uh, Romania, and they even say that they rather just they would just prefer just to stay in their like own country because they have family there. But when they come to Britain, they thought everything's gonna be okay, but they're wrong because they're still living on the streets, struggling, etc. So I just believe before uh, they come to us, we should make sure that we are prepared for them to come to us, and then that way we should for now just close the borders, and then yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, over here next. Um, I don't think that Britain's full. Most of Britain's just Greenland. I think they just use that as an excuse to justify for the opinion. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Um, we've got a lady here and then at the back, so the microphone over here. If you actually check the net migration, there are more people leaving the UK than there are coming into the UK. So the actual problem is the media. They're just manipulating statistics to make us feel like there's an issue with the UK, but the UK could need, could, could use the amount of people that are coming to their advantage. Okay, thank you. If you pass the microphone, James, to this gentleman there. Thank you. Um, the fact is that um, we have a lot of students coming to the UK in order to study, and um, 
we have less spaces in our universities, meaning that people, the British um, society, people living inside the UK are unable to like go to these like higher up um, universities like Warwick, um, Oxford, because they would have the grade requirements, but they would give priority to the international students instead of uh, the students that reside in the UK. Also, we have a lot of homelessness and um, in Coventry in particular, um, we're making more houses and um, not a lot of uh, the population of Coventry like that. So it, if we do close our borders, it, w um, it will um, keep homelessness down because most of the people that come from out of UK do come without like nothing with them. So they will need a house to live in. So if we block the borders, people who are homelessness at the moment can get a house and we won't have to spend most of the council money building houses and we could fund other things like education, open up the libraries. Okay, thank you very much. We've got a gentleman at the back and then a lady in the second row here. So this gentleman here. Um, the point was made that before we should let people come to our country, we need to stabilise our country and they need to stabilise theirs. But with I immigrants coming in, our country gains financial and economical benefits from tax and they also send money back to their families in that country, which can also help their uh, country of origin. Thank you. And this lady here? I'm not saying Britain's completely full, but we do have quite a dense population. There are bigger countries that have more space for migrants to go to. Right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to our two uh, colleagues here. All those people who've had hands up, keep, keep hold of those thoughts. We're coming back to you in a moment. But, uh, Grace, can I get you to answer some of those points that were made there? And then further over to you. Firstly, only 2% of Britain is Greenland. And we need to keep that for parks and countryside and animals and farming and things like that. We're building houses for the homeless people. Some homeless people don't fit the criteria of being homeless, so they end up having to sofa surf around their friend's house, but eventually their friends can't keep like taking them in, so they have to sleep outside in the streets. And to your point, I don't know your name, but um, I haven't seen, I don't know like what empty streets you're referring to, but I haven't seen any, and especially in Coventry, and I know in my area, there's rows and rows and rows of semi-detached houses, all full, more people then can fit like the bedroom limit. Say there's, there'd be like two bedrooms and there'll be about five people living in the house, especially in my area in Hillfields in Coventry. And that's everywhere. That's all my friends' houses too. So. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you, Grace. Further, come and, and add your uh, comments because we've, there's been quite a few comments that, that you need to address too. Overall, I don't think that we should close our borders because of the contribution that immigrants do make to our country. Well, what would we be without immigrants? We wouldn't have many doctors, taxi drivers, where would you get your curry from, really? Like, immigrants overall, they do contribute to our country, and our con I don't think Britain would be Britain without multiculturalism. You're not British just because you have a certain skin colour or you've lived here, f and your family lived here for 20, 30 years. My family have been here since the 60s. My grandparents, were, my grandparents immigrated here, and my parents were born here. And some people might think that just because your entire family aren't born here, you're not British, but I definitely feel that I am British. And overall, I feel that immigration does contribute to our country so, so much. And we wouldn't be the country that we are without immigration and without helping other countries too. Although our country does have problems, immigration is a problem and we can't deny that. But it's just about controlling it rather than shutting our borders altogether because if we did that, we wouldn't be the country that we are today. compelling points but there's more being raised from the floor now I had a, a, about three hands up over here and then a couple a gentleman at the back and then another couple of people so can we go to this lady in the front row first earlier you said that the refugees coming in most of them are like terrorists or something like that I think it's wrong to say that because the terrorists it's the terrorists that they're trying to run away from I don't think the refugees are part of the problem if you know what I mean if that makes sense Yep. Um, do you want to come back on that quickly? Because I don't think you actually said that specific thing, but do you want to address it? Come, come forward just so that we can see you. I said, with the Paris attacks, there was a passport found in Paris, which proved that one of the people coming in with the refugees posed as a refugee, but he was actually a terrorist. And I'm saying if we open our borders completely, 
more of them are going to risk their lives in really dangerous ways like some of them hiding in car bonnets like to come over here more of them are going to die because of that and it puts our safety at risk because they are posing as refugees and coming in as terrorists I thought it would be best to answer that point because I think it was a factual point that I wasn't sure you, you had actually made, but thank you for that. Let's come back to the audience. We've got uh, some people at the back, so there's a gentleman here. Um, I'd just like to say about the uh, allegations that Britain is full, do we see this room full at all? If we got everyone in this room, it would probably only fit a few cubic, not even feet of the room. We can't keep making these allegations saying Britain is full if we haven't got the facts. I mean, also with the, uh, a lot of Facebook pages, like for example, the uh, Britain First Facebook page, it's a lot of people just hating against uh, refugees and immigrants. We can't just keep apparently putting up our defenses against these people we have to accept them into our lives because they're what they are what make britain it's not britain first it's you know we're not even technically british ourselves we uh british people start as, uh, as immigrants from another country okay thank you very much um the i think if you could put that microphone along uh, was there somebody along here who wanted it next um uh, this lady at the front hasn't heard, we haven't heard from her. And was there anybody on this side? If you want to get your hands up, um, okay. This lady here, and then we'll come. Uh, this lady here first, then we'll come to you. Um, Our safety, but people aren't going to leave their countries because they're not um, safe. They leave their countries because it's dangerous, and Britain's a better place for them. Okay, thank you very much. This lady here. And following on from that point, um, surely as one of the world's most richest countries, it is our duty to accommodate people running for their lives um, into our country. And there are many other European countries who aren't as rich, who aren't as large as Britain, who do accommodate immigrants. So if they can do it, why can't we? Thank you. This lady here. It is undeniable that immigration is beneficial both to the UK and to the refugees themselves, but quite simply it isn't a long-term solution. We'd be far better off using our resources, our time and our influence to liaise with governments in countries like Syria and Iraq to stabilise these places so, that peop so people don't have to run away from their homes but instead can live in harmony where they come from without having to fear being oppressed. Okay, thank you. This gentleman here. The British government is making excuses that uh, Britain is full, which is not. It's only 64.64 million p uh, British citizens are living in this country. And look at China, uh, 1.4 billion people are living there. And now there are one-child policy. Britain is not doing nothing really. Uh, uh, Germany and Sweden are doing far more than us. They are uh, taking refugees, asylum seekers into their countries. And we're just standing there still watching other countries helping and we're just throwing bombs in Syria and expecting most uh, Syrians coming, uh, Syrians and Iraqis and Afghans to coming in our countries and uh, begging to uh, live in this country for safety and peace and love. Okay, thank you very much. And we'll have one more point before we come back to our, uh, our two key speakers. Off you go. Um, Britain might not be full, but we simply don't have the resources to provide for the refugees who are coming into our country. We can't support vital parts of our system like the NHS, who are supporting people who have been living here for many years. So we simply can't support new people coming into the country. OK, thank you very much. Let's hear back from our, our two m main speakers. Um, has that changed anything uh, that you're thinking, Grace? You've had quite a few um, strong comments there. I think people... When it's a case of immigrants, people think it's no, all immigrants are bad. No, immigrants are really, really good and they're beneficial to our country. I think about 60% of the UK, somewhere down the line, your family is going to be from a different country. They're really good and they are, like you said, they are taxi drivers and they're people that work in our local shops and things like that. But today, right now, in our current crisis, with Syrians and with terrorists, we need to, it's like when you overfill a bowl, when like a bowl overflows, instead of mopping up the mess, you need to empty the bowl first. We need to fix the problem at the source and not just allow them to come into our country. Yeah. OK, 
Okay, some very strong <laughs> thoughts yeah. there, Grace. Thank you. Further, do you have an answer to that? Um, I think with the topic of Syria, as you guys may know, Britain has recently decided to bomb Syria in the retaliation of like basically trying to get ISIS out. But a nuclear bomb costs half a million pounds. What can we do with half a million pounds? We could feed our homeless, we could build more houses for British people. And we're talking about how Syrians are a problem. We're helping make it a problem. We're bombing their country. <laughs> um, um, Actually, that's about it. <laughs> okay. okay. I think there are actually a few more people who wanted to speak. So we will come back to the audience one last time before we go to the judge's final decision. Yeah, as I thought, there's a row of hands up. So um, uh, let's have the microphone. Uh, I won't take people who've spoken a lot because there are some people who haven't spoken. So if we go to the end of this line with this lady, and we'll work down the line a little bit. So we'll come to this lady first. The question was, is Britain for, should we let people, more people in? And I think people are focusing on refugees and asylum seekers, but they're not focusing on, say, economic migrants from Australia or the USA. So if you close these borders, you're not, you clo are you closing it for the refugees or are you closing it for everyone? Okay, thank you. And pass it to the... <coughs> uh, you made a very interesting point about refugees coming into our country and benefiting our country economically with jobs, new co companies and businesses. But why should we let this happen when many people in our country don't have jobs? Uh, a couple of years back, there was an economic downfall what affected our country massively. Lots of people lost their jobs. Loads of money was lost by the country and the effect of that's still here. So why should we give jobs away to people who aren't from our country if people in our country need them jobs. Okay, thank you. I'm going to get you to pass the microphone back to, to the gentleman at the back. There's final comments now. Um, coming back to the point about uh, terrorists uh, coming into our country uh, in with the refugees, ISIS, uh, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram all together make only 0.003% of even the Muslim population of the world, no matter how many people there are in those groups, they can't, they're not going to affect us if we all fight back against them. So closing the borders, even if they do come to our country, there's, there's no chance that we're going to let them affect us too much. Kay. So with the, immigrants and the refugees they're not part of them okay thank you very much lady here and one other gentleman then we're done this lady here france retaliated by bombing syria and like you said britain wants to bomb syria maybe if we start bombing them they would have no reason to come here okay thank you <laughs> and a, a, a final comment from the floor I want to talk about a different issue. When you said about um, without immigrants, without doctors, etc. But then what about the countries they came from? If we're taking their doctors and nurses, etc., what, what would they have? They will always remain under that low developed country, unlike Britain, who is already high up there. So then why do we need to take doctors and nurses from other low developed countries? Because then they always just remain low. I'd just say let the high developed countries teach the people already in there, for, for example, Britain, let the British people uh, become the doctors of Britain, and then they can go to low third countries to help them, but don't take poor country, uh, uh, poor doctors from poor countries, don't take them away, because they could improve that um, country. So a very interesting point to finish on from the floor, that issue of uh, perhaps by uh, inviting or, or, or uh, having more people in from different countries, we're robbing those other countries of their talent. So that was an interesting point from the floor to finish on. And I'm going to ask you both to come to a final summary uh, and maybe incorporate any of the final points you've heard. Grace, let's have you first up and um, your final comments for us. I think we should close Britain's borders, not forever, just for now, our time of crisis. I think Henry is exactly right, but we need to fix Syria. We need to get to the, like we need to get to the source of the terrorism. Basically, we can't keep letting them in and then expecting anything to be solved because they're just going to keep coming 
and keep coming. We need to help Syrians take, back, take their country back. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Further, your final comments is your final opportunity to sway the audience. How do you feel that if we are going to help Syria, we should stop bombing them, along with many other countries in the world? As we bomb Syria, we attack ISIS, but who's there for Syria? Who's going to help them out? And we're not really helping right now, I don't think. And overall, the issue of should we close our borders? To, with the issue of um, terrorists posed as migrants, um, I don't feel that, cons considering this was a suicide bomber and they found a British passport, that passport must be really strong, um, seeing as he's blew himself up, apparently. Um, but overall, I feel that immigration um, and closing our borders isn't the best thing to do because of the um, contribution that immigrants do make to our country. And with refugees, I don't know if you guys know, but um, in World War II, Syrian took in hundreds and hundreds of thousands of British refugees fleeing the country during World War II. And we should um, help that, we should like thank them for that, because that is a massive contribution that, that happened to our country. And yeah, I just don't feel that we should close the borders. It's not an effective solution. The effective solution, if we're going to talk about other countries, is helping them rather than bombing them. So, is Britain full? Should the borders be closed? Did Coventry or Walsall win your vote? Well, I think there seemed to be a bit of a sway of opinion at different points in that, but the only person whose opinion that matters is our judge, Craig from Uprising. Craig, come on down. <laughs> Just grab a microphone. So, how was that for you, as they say? Very tough again, Diane. Um, it's not just my opinion that matters, all your opinions matter too. Um, right, okay, so <clears throat> really, really good debate, well done. Um, I, I thought we had two very contrasting styles, so um, I felt Team Coventry went in for the jugular, cold, hard facts, getting it out there, which is not a bad tactic at all. I felt you were a little bit more measured, a bit calmer, you were getting your points across in a nice, calm way, which also worked. Um, <laughs> Why am I doing this? Um, you so, can't say it's a draw. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to say it's a draw. Um, I think what I went for in the end, it did turn into a bit of a debate about Syria, and obviously the question was wider than that. Um, with that in mind, um, I think the team that did better at including the, the whole debate about immigration and, and borders um, was Team Walsall. So well done. Okay, well done Ferva, well done Grace, well done Team Walsall. Will it be the same next time? Join us for another Speak for Yourself debate.